Hey guys, it's John here from John's DIY Playground. Today I'll be reviewing this device here called the Bolt. It's an IoT or Internet of Things device and it's based off one of the ESP32 style Wi-Fi chips. Um, what makes it unique is <coughs> it has a special firmware on board that uh, binds it automatically with the Bolt uh, cloud, which I'll show you later. And it allows you to send and receive data to this device and really get set up and running without very much um, coding experience or knowledge. So I will demonstrate today to you a circuit where we take this, um, it's uh, called the uh, DF22 temperature and humidity sensor, um, coupling it with a um, what's more or less an Arduino mini. You can use any kind of Arduino like an Uno for this project as well. And then I'm going to be using serial, um, software serial um, interface to the device here. It does have uh, five digitals, including one on this side and four on this side, one analog on this side. So some, some projects you can actually set up without even having the Arduino or any other um, sensors hooked from the outside. They can hook directly to this device, which is really um, unique. I'd like to demonstrate for you guys how quickly the Bolt comes online and handshakes with the cloud. I've configured it to work with my cell phone, um, which gives it the router information for my home Wi-Fi network. That's a one-time setup with their free app. So now that that's done, I'm going to do is power it up right now, and you can have a look. The blue light will come on first, indicating that it's trying to connect with my Wi-Fi router. Then as soon as it does that, the green LED comes on here, and that shows that you're hooked to the Bolt IoT cloud. Pretty quick response time. Here's an overview of what I did for the hookup for this example. We've got our bolt here, and it needs its 5 volts in ground for power. I'm actually going to use that by uh, the Pro Mini's power. It's going to be plugged into my USB port of my computer. And then we have our TX and RX lines, and again, I said I'm using software serial, so I'm hooked to the uh, pins digital 8 and 9. I actually didn't use the TX RX pins so that I could monitor what's coming through to the uh, Pro Mini. And then for the DHT22, um, I don't have a resistor hooked up in mine because it's actually attached to a small circuit board. So it has the pull-up resistor between the high side and the signal pin, which is the yellow here. But our signal pin's going to digital too. And then of course the sensor itself also needs power and ground. So for our example, we actually have two things to program. We have to program our bolt and configure it basically. And then we have to send code to our Arduino, two separate things. So let's do the Bolt first. After you have your device set up to work with your account using the either iPhone or Android app, you'll see your Bolt here. It'll say it's online when it's hooked up and plugged in, but it's not linked to any product. And you can think of product as like the program that you want to run, even though we're not really sending code to our Bolt. We're just setting it up to configure it with the cloud. So. To make a product and link it to it, come over here to products, and then we'll just have to add a product. So it's going to ask us some basic things. What do you want to call the product? So we'll call it uh, Playground DHT22 for our temperature and humidity sensor. Then what would you like to connect to your bolt? In this case, we're actually going to do input, which is going to be um, UART. So UART means we're going to use serial data instead of using those five digital inputs and that analog input I showed you earlier. Hit done. And then what you have to do next, it says product has not been set up yet. Click the tool icon above to configure it. So we'll configure. And now it's going to say how many CSV values do you want to send? We're going to send temperature and humidity. So We'll pick two. 9600 is the default baud rate. In the earliest or soonest, you can send data is once every five minutes. And I'll show you one little workaround when you're debugging and setting up your program. We're going to name our variables. The first one we'll call temp. And the next one we'll just call HUM for humidity. With that, we can just um, stop on this part of the configuration, hitting save. And then the next thing we want to do is the code side. So there's hardware, which is basic setup, then code. Code has to do with what kind of code we're going to use. HTML is kind of used when you're sending data from a web page. We want to use JavaScript in this side because, for our example, we're going to graph our data. And 
I'm going to call this, let's say, DH22 example. And you can use this cool import feature to um, quickly pull in code, but it only works for one variable. One unique thing about um, line graphs we're going to do today is you can actually show two line graphs on the same page. And I have some sample code here to do that. And I'll put this in a link below so you guys can have quick access to it. Um, so I'm just going to paste that in here. So what that's going to do is title our uh, graph. It'll tell it that we want um, time as our uh, y-axis in the first one of the graphs to be temperature. And the second one will be humidity. And save that. We'll hit save. And then we can exit out of here. So now, <clears throat> when we look at products, we do have our DHT pro um, play playground product set up. Now we're going to link it to the device. You can do that here. It's that says it's not linked, so I'm going to link it. Something took a strange twist there. Let me hit refresh. Okay, devices, not linked. Uh, maybe I'm learning as I go here. I have to do it this way, link it to a device, I'm sorry. <laughs> I only have one device to choose from. Do you want to link the device with the product? Yes. Kind of did it in the wrong way. I was supposed to stay with my products and not go up to devices. So now I can see if I'm looking at devices. I have my bolt. I'm online. I have this. Um, now I can look at code, but we won't do that yet because we still have to configure our, our Arduino. So let's head there. Okay, so on the Arduino side of things, I'm actually using Arduino's online editor. And um, we have our sample code here. It's not a very big program. It only has a couple of libraries we're using, which is the software serial and the DHT library for the sensor. Now, the reason I chose software serial in this case is because for this example, I want to show you guys on the serial monitor what happens when the bolt talks to the Arduino. Basically, what happens is every five minutes, um, the bolt is going to request data via serial transmission to our Arduino and it does that by sending a command that's very simple. It's just sending a command of capital R capital D which I guess means read. It wants to read data. So what we're going to do in our main loop is just kind of hang out and look for that command and then decipher it see if an RD comes across. Um, if it does then we're actually going to go read our data from our sensor and send it back to the bolt. I'll send that right now. Just upload it like this. You can see the uploads taking place. It doesn't take very long. It's a really nice interface. And so it's all done. So now that it's done with the upload of the Arduino code, I can actually start um, checking and seeing if there's some signals here. And you can do that by just hitting the monitor and you can see we're looking at our Arduino Pro Mini on COM7. So the command will show up here. So let me um, fast forward until I do see the command. I'll keep taping and then I'll chop this video up so you don't have to sit here and wait for uh, what could be up to five minutes. Uh, and there it happened right away. It already happened. So we got data 7862 and 4350. So keep those numbers in mind. This is 78 degrees Fahrenheit and 43 percent humidity. I come over to the bolt cloud now and if I click on this icon, view the device, it's going to use that code that we did in the JavaScript portion earlier when we configured bolt to create this web page that I can access at any time. So this is going to have both the temperature and humidity data on it. And so you can see it's got a data point here from it's uh, 308 PM here. That was five minutes ago. And now the data point that just came up, the 7862 and the 43.5. Before we go, um, let me show you one other thing. So I mentioned earlier that the Bolt um, shortest interval duration is five minutes between data points. So if you're debugging, that can be kind of a pain. But there's a way around it that I wanted to show you guys. If you come back over to Bolt Cloud, keep in mind data counts three. And right now my last count was at 313. 
if you hit this other button that says deploy configuration you click that and that basically is going to force the bolt to take another data point so you can confirm that by coming back over here hit refresh and now data counts at four and I just took a, another data point here 78.8 and 43.9 so that makes it easy if you guys are working on some programming to see if uh, you're gathering data the way you expect it to so that's it for now. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and please remember to hit the subscribe button. This is John from John's DIY Playground. Have a great day.